Well, good morning. I hope you guys are well. Uh, welcome to this uh, update stroke normal wisdom stroke chat while I'm out for a walk type vlog. Uh, today I'm wandering, actually I've just come up a, a bloody hill and a half. Uh, let me show you it here. Uh, well, actually it's not that bad when you look at it back there. I don't know if you can see that behind me. That's all going down that way. That's, uh, this is Barton, Barton Springs, Barton Hills. Uh, it's just outside my village. It's like I've walked here, don't have to drive because it's, it's not any real distance or anything. Uh, so the reason I haven't been about, you know, I've been doing these Norman, Norman's Wisdom things. And uh, I recorded one a couple of weeks back, uh, but unfortunately I recorded the whole thing in 120 FPS. Uh, and uh, so it had no, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, image stabilization on it and it looked bloody awful so I decided to can that and go back out and when I went to go back out and do it they'd shot off the uh, they'd shot off the, the the field which is absolutely mad uh, they're like covering like about three two meter square areas of gold mouth and reseeding it so they shut the whole field off like blocked it all up basically I could have climbed over the fence and walked it but I thought no so no, I'll just leave it so been looking around for other routes since then. Well, I say looking around, I haven't really been looking at all because I sort of thought, ah, that's on it. But came out for a walk on Sunday with my brother-in-law, Michael. Hello, Michael, if you're watching. And he took me around this route and it's a good, it's a good four and a half mile walk and it's quite strenuous. And I thought, do you know what? A, I'm going to start doing that maybe once or twice a week to get a bit of fitness up. And B, there's some quite nice views up here, but, but C, a D and E, no, but C, there's a, if you look over here, all down here there's a load of woods which I walked through on the way back and uh, there's some really good compositions there I think so uh, I'm going to take another walk through there this morning just to have a look at some of the ones that I looked at on Sunday to see if there's anything worthwhile um, but that brings me on to another point I can't really do a lot at the moment even if there are any because I don't have a camera uh, so I've switched uh, from Canon uh, to another brand which if you watch the podcast you'll know all about but uh, if you haven't then I'll leave you in suspense for a little while because I'm going to do a video on it as soon as my new camera arrives which hopefully is today because I got a message last night saying that it's due to be delivered by today which if it is it's fantastic so I'll let you know all about that but yeah I've been a Canon user or had been a Canon user for you know 13 years like going through all of the different models and decided time for a change still going to use my Canon glass for now uh, but yeah, decided it was time for a change. Uh, also, I wanted just to keep you updated to let you know that I'm going to start doing weekly vlogs again, hopefully from August. Uh, I haven't, I haven't done any, um, like I said, since the last Norman's Wisdom, simply because I don't want to just put in filler for no reason. And if I've got nothing to talk about, I mean, I've been out taking some photos of birds. Actually, yesterday I got, like I, I called yesterday, uh, sparrow Appreciation Tuesday because God there were sparrows everywhere in my garden I've got some really lovely shots of them I might pop some up here actually and you can have a look Yeah, they were really lovely, those, uh, those sparrows, and, and they were a really underrated bird, I think. Anyway, I didn't want to, <laughs> the long and short of it is I didn't want to do another whole 
uh, burden video from my back garden because it's sort of like, oh, what have you done with the stuff? Well, pretty much what I've done before. So I'll just be showing you the same regurgitated stuff all over again. So I decided against that. So, but from this week or from the end of this month, starting next month, I'll be out doing vlogs again. Only local for the time being, just a few woodland areas, which seems to be the vogue and, uh, you know, a few little lone trees I've got lined up and hopefully the odd, uh, the odd bit of heather or two. Um, and then we'll see where we're at after that. Um, and the other thing, yes, I've, I've forgotten to do the draw for the vlog pocket, which I did oh, weeks ago now, feels like years ago. So I will do that draw as soon as I get home and I will tack it on to the end of this video. So if you've entered that draw, then stick around or fast forward to the end, it's up to you. And you may find that you've won something. Anyway, I'm going that way up this hill. And uh, while I'm going up there, or possibly once I'm up there, because I'll probably sound a bit of a panting mess on the way out there, I'll talk to you about my subject for today. So my plan today was that I was going to come up here and uh, do a circular walk and take a walk all around the top of these hills and then down into the, into the woods below in the springs and uh, scope out some, uh, scope out some uh, uh, compositions. But uh, for a future vlog but uh, there's a there's a group of about 20 or 30 people all sat on the hill up there so hey i don't fancy walking past them just in case they're probably just normal kids but you know you never know and b i feel a <laughs> wandering past them with my gopro especially as i've just spent the whole time wandering around the top of the hills talking on my gopro uh yeah they'll probably think what is this twat doing so I decided to just do a swift U-turn and I'll go back down the way I came. But it is gorgeous up here, absolutely fantastic. I'll show you some of the sights from a, from a safer vantage point, if you like. So basically, this is, the, this is Barton Hills. Uh, I think it's a nature reserve, I'm sure it's a nature reserve. And uh, you've got basically a couple of reasonable sized mounds. Is that making it sound interesting already, aren't I? If you look behind me here, just down there, you've got the, the woods and the springs, which is quite a popular haunt, uh, clearly, for a load of kids. And uh, over the back there as well, you've also got Sharpano Clappers, which I've been up in a couple of times, which is a nice forest. And then you've got all the beautiful rolling hills of Bedfordshire. But that's not really what I'm here to talk about today. Uh, what I was gonna say about this place though, is it, it, although it's a fantastic view, and it is gorgeous. Like wandering up here is lovely for the soul. Sometimes it's hard to translate that into an image. You know, there's lots of, uh, lots of shots to be had, but, uh, well, sorry, there's lots of views to be had, but whether you can convert those into a, into a decent image is, a, is another matter entirely. Unless, of course, you just cheat and take a pano. Yeah, I saw it, Chris. Not that you're watching, I shouldn't think. We'll talk about that another time. Anyway, what I don't want to talk to you about today, what did I want to talk to you about today? Well, basically, the subject of today, I could have put a clickbaity title in really, couldn't I, and said, the best two, the two best tips to vastly improve your photography, but I thought, uh, I thought better at that. Let's get this gate. But what I want to talk about really is a couple of things that I think Lift, well, that I know lifted my photography from from a, a level up to the next level. And they're, they're, they're not basic. Well, one of them is absolutely basic, but they're not, it's not, I'm not talking about, you know, compositional tips and rule of thirds and the exposure triangle and, you know, golden spiral and all of that, all of that. Not talking about any of that, all the more advanced stuff like focus stacking or hyperfocal distance, and they're all they all have their place and they're all actually really very important when you're first starting out. You know, you need to learn those. So there's a there's a plethora of, of videos on YouTube that will help you to um, help you to learn those things, and that's really fantastic. But if you sit down all day and watch all of the videos that are out there, well, take more than a day. You know, all of the good ones and many of the bad ones. If you sit down there and watch all of those on how to take fantastic photos, you'll be 
the most knowledgeable non-photographer out there. What you need to do, the most, the most important thing when you're learning photography, as we all still are, is practice. You've got to go out there every day or as often as you can and practice your photography because you can learn whatever you like out of a book or out of, off of YouTube. But if you never go out there and practice and make the mistakes and learn how to correct them and learn little tips and tricks for yourself, you'll never, you'll never lift your photography to another level because you'll never have a photo to, to judge against when you start taking photos in the future for a start. But most of the stuff, other than the real technical basics of using the camera, you know, like what button to press and, you know, what, you know, what dial to twist and what menu setting to, to change. Other than those things, if you go out, you should pick up most of the other stuff through trial and error. So exposure triangle, if you fiddle about enough with your camera, you'll work out the exposure triangle. If you take enough photos, you'll click and go, ah, oh, why did that one not work? Shutter speed was too low. Why did that one not work? ISO was too low, you know? You'll, you'll work those things out. Composition, you'll look after a while and you'll say, why are my photos not working? Why did that one work and that one didn't? Ah, well, is it because I put the main subject on, on a third? You know, it's a bit steep down here. I wasn't planning to come back this way. The way I was planning to come back was a lovely shallow descent. Obviously, uh, that's been scuppered. So now I've got this steep ass bloody walk back to do. Never mind. But yeah, so the, basically, it's all about practice. It's all about going out there and practicing your photography. Trial and error, make the mistakes, correct the mistakes, learn from the mistakes. And then what happens is, is you start to be what's known as subconsciously competent with your photography. You'll do it by nature. You won't, you won't realise that you're doing it. You won't realise that you're using the rule of thirds. You'll just use the rule of thirds or not. And then you can choose to if you don't want to. But if you do it enough, you'll know when the situation is needed. So there's a theory. I can't remember whose theory it is. I'll find out and put on the down here somewhere. And it's the four stages of learning anything at all. So you've got four stages to learn something until you, I might say master it, but become proficient at it. And those stages are unconscious incompetence. So that means you've never done it before. So for instance, if you're talking about photography, you've never picked up a camera and you have no intention of picking up a camera. So you're incompetent, but you're unaware of your incompetence because you've never tried it. And then you get to a second stage, which is conscious incompetence, which means you pick up your camera, you realise you haven't got a clue what you're doing. So you're consciously incompetent. And then the third stage, where, you know, most of us reside for a long time, is conscious competence. So you've picked up your camera, you know what you're doing with it, but you still have to think about it. You still think, oh, now what do I do again to get that setting? What do I do again? How, what's the rule of thirds? Let me, yeah, that's conscious competence. And then the fourth stage when you cracked it is unconscious competence, which means that you do it, you don't need to think about it. It's like driving. Think about when you were learning to drive. When you first passed your test, Another hill. When you first passed your test, you had to think about everything. And then after a while of just driving, you just you, you find your mind's wandering and you're thinking about all sorts of different things going on in the world. Except for driving, you're just doing it. It's just natural. And that is practice, my friends. That is what practice does for you. So that is the number one most important thing if you want to be better and take better photographs. But number two. And I think this tends to happen or probably has to happen once you've reached unconscious, unconscious incompetence. No, nope. unconscious competence is you then need to start walking down a hill without dying. 
you then need to start putting something more into your photographs than just focus stacking rule of thirds exposure bracketing hyperfocal distance fibonacci spiral golden spiral all of those you need to start putting in feeling emotion tell a story and that that will take your photo- photography up to another level absolutely 100 percent because I've never ever looked at a photo ever and gone wow they have nailed the hyperfocal distance on that ever and the reason is is because it doesn't really matter at all or oh I wonder if they use spot metering or evaluative metering to get that shot I might have thought that on the 50,000th time of viewing the image but the first time of viewing an image I either think I really like that or yeah it's all right or what a load of rubbish and usually nine times out of ten if the first thing I spot on it is oh that's nicely composed it's not a very good shot in, for me if the one time out of ten I look at a shot and go wow and it I don't think about anything. I don't think about the composition. I don't think about how sharp it is. I don't think about any of that. What I think is, oh, in fact, I don't even think, I get a feeling, you know, whatever that feeling may be, either warmth or awe, not normally awe, awesome. <laughs> I won't go there, podcast. But warmth or fear or disgust even or a feeling of sadness or solitude or loneliness or you know calm peace that's what you should be putting into your photographs that is what you should be putting into your photography and it doesn't matter where you go to get that you know i see i have seen some images from some of the most magnificent places in the uk specifically that are just sterile because the photographer is so busy concentrating on oh got to get that rock got to get that rock in the bottom corner there got to get that lake just right got to get those hills up there must think about my color grading got to get the rule of thirds oh got to check the time on it you got exposure time oh got to check the sharpness no that doesn't make a great photo it makes a sterile photo all of those things are, are reasonably important of course because when you get to a point you may turn around and go oh look i'm back to where i was i might sit down again for a minute don't make you think that all of those things might make you might make you you might think about those in in the after the effect after you've burst looked at it you then might say oh that is sharp yeah that is well composed yeah but initially if it isn't making you go wow that's a really good photo oh I feel something from it then the photographer hasn't done his job in my opinion and that will take your photos that's what will take your photos onto another level you know doing that getting out there practicing loads and then when you take a shot just try and think what story am I trying to tell and it's not just landscape photography it's all all genres of photography you know like for instance I took some the, the bird shots that you would have seen yeah that, that, that I took yesterday, the one that sticks in my mind, the one that's got a story about it, is the sparrow with his mouth open and his tongue out. Instantly, that's the first one that got to me. And I specifically left a load of negative space on the, I can't remember which side it is of the, of the bird now, but just to draw you into that darkness, like he's shouting, it's like, it's like, he's, it's like he's screaming into a darkness. And you might not see it like that, but when I took that photo, obviously I didn't take the photo. I, I can't tell what the bird's going to do. It's a bit different, you know, from when you're doing landscape because you can't quite tell what the wildlife's going to do. But after you took it, you pick that one and you go, that one is the one that says something to me. Not the, not the same image with the bird with his mouth shut that's nicely composed and sharp. The, it, it's the picture that speaks to you. It's the picture that tells a story. It's the picture that either, either portrays an emotion or evokes an emotion. That's the one that that you want to be focusing on that's what takes your photography up to another level 
all of the best photographers in the world, they all have that. They all have that passion and they all put that passion in one way or another into their photography. So yeah, that's it really. That's all I wanted to talk about this morning other than the fact that, you know, I'm back and blah, 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 which I said at the beginning. So yeah, I'm back to where I started. I'm back to where we started. And now I've got to walk down a damn steep hill to get home, which is a bit frustrating. But there you go. When there's about 4 million kids sat up on a hill, you probably think, mm, that's a good idea. Anyway, thank you for watching. I will see you in August uh, when I'm back doing weekly vlogs, hopefully, with my new camera, which I'll talk to you about. I'll see you on the podcast, of course, if you, uh, if you watch the podcast. Uh, I love the podcast. It's great. It's a great Friday night. Not usually such a great Saturday morning when I'm editing it at six o'clock, but it's still a very good Friday night. Um, and of course, I'll see you back at home in about, well, for me, half an hour for you you know the blink of an eye when I do the draw for the uh, the winner of the vlog pocket so I'll see you there and there you go as if by magic I'm I'm back at home uh, to do the draw for the vlog pocket um, there's a nice little walk actually today slightly spoiled by all the people who were at the top of the hills but you know they got as much right to be there as I have they're probably just enjoying the sunrise or or something similar uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, let's do this draw uh, for the vlog pocket. Here it is. Uh, there it is. And I will say the only thing about it is it's missing its little um, cloth pouch that you that you can store it in. So I don't know where that's gone. It's disappeared off somewhere. But other than that, it's all in perfect working order. So let's switch over to the screen so we can show you all the names that are in the drawer and do the draw. So here you go, you should see the names. If you commented on one of, I think it was three videos that I set it up for, um, then you are automatically entered into a draw. I've only entered you once if you commented, no matter how many times. Um, yeah, just so you, uh, so we don't have multiple entries, but if you look down the list, you should see your name on there if you commented. It's quite a few people. So thank you very much, by the way, for commenting. Much appreciated, as always. And then what I'm going to do is just scroll down past these adverts and pick the winner. Here we go. So pick a random winner start. No way. <laughs> well, there you go. Well done, Mally. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you've won. You've won the vlog pocket. You can see today's date. Uh, and the time I've just been on my walk so yeah well done mate uh, what can I say fix no it's not a fix I, I did do that honestly so um, if you just want to get in contact with me Mally and um, we'll, we'll sort out getting that over to you well done mate well done well there you go what can I say sounds like a fix wasn't a fix honestly completely genuine um, you can see the date and time on it and everything so um, yeah anyway well done Mally um, and thanks for watching again you know thanks everyone for watching this vlog um, and uh, yeah hope you enjoyed it and I should see you out at the start of August to do some actual proper photography so uh, yeah see you then